We're looking at the subject of wisdom and how the wisdom of God can be applied in our lives and how we as individuals can seek wisdom and how wisdom, once we seek it, can be imparted to our lives. Proverbs chapter number 4 and verse 7 says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. It is important that we seek wisdom from our early years. We need to teach our children how to seek for wisdom, to pray for wisdom. We as adults need to ask God for wisdom. If you're leading a church, if you're leading a company, if you're working for somebody, if you're serving in civil society, working in government, it is important that God gives you wisdom and that you seek that wisdom. It is important to know that God only works according to the knowledge that you have. The prophet said in Hosea that my people perish for lack of knowledge. And so the reason I know that the Holy Spirit only works according to the knowledge that a person has is because, for example, you can have a church. Uh, our church, for example, has uh, many thousands of people in it. But even though those people on a Sunday morning hear exactly the same thing at exactly the same time, we never get the same results. Everybody gets a different result. And generally, that's based on, firstly, that individual's knowledge, because the Holy Spirit will only work according to knowledge. Of the many, many thousands of people listening today or listening to any message on a church service at any given moment, the reason we have different results is because of our level of knowledge. Knowledge is key, but knowledge, once it is received, has to be packaged in a wisdom package so that that knowledge can be applied. Scripture says in Proverbs chapter number 3, and verse 13 through 15, happy is the man that finds wisdom and happy is the man that gets understanding. So if we find wisdom, wisdom, because it's hidden, has to be discovered, has to be found. Once we find wisdom, the knowledge that we possess, wisdom has the ability to package that knowledge in a way that will benefit our lives. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, verse 6 through 7, that firstly, we are influenced by the wisdom of men. The wisdom of men is important because the wisdom of men uh, grooms our lives. It, it helps us progress as human beings. Uh, it's the philosophies of men. These are ideas that, that enrich our lives as human beings. The wisdom of men comes through schooling. Schooling is important. It's important that every one of us uh, improve our knowledge through schooling. It's never too late uh, to go back to, to formal school and learn some things. Every one of us should be students. One of my most uh, exhilarating moments of ministry were uh, some years ago in the country of Ghana. I was one of the keynote speakers at a uh, graduation of uh, a Central University a university led by Dr. Mensah Ottable. And uh, there were several thousand graduates that day. And uh, after the, uh, uh, the address to the students uh, and the students began to come through, uh, there was a man there that came through. He was uh, 77 years old, just about to celebrate his 78th birthday. And he shook my hand and took some time and thanked us for inspiring him for all the years we've been ministering into his life and said that when he turned 70, he made up his mind he was going to go back to school, went back to school, did his O-level, and then did his A-level, and then at the ripe old age of 74, enrolled in, in graduate school. Spent four years in university, and uh, that was his graduation day. And then he gave me a little wink with a twinkle in his eye saying, in two years, I'll complete my master's, and I've made up my mind, he said, by the time I get to 84, I will have a PhD. I was so impressed and so moved that I had to improve my own schooling. So wisdom comes through, uh, uh, the, the, the wisdom of men comes through schooling. Secondly, the wisdom of men comes through life experiences. We go through life, and we experience life. Sometimes life can deal a, a heavy blow, Sometimes life can, can cause us to, to have heartbreak, uh, disappointment. We can be discouraged. And there are high points in our lives where we have uh, exhilaration through, through emotional highs. 
uh, through things that bring us personal pleasure and gratification. And, and then there are, of course, uh, moments of betrayal and disappointment. But all of those become lessons that we learn. We learn how to and how not to, what to and what not to. And so these lessons through life where the scripture says, let the older women teach the younger women, it's because the older women have the ability through life to teach younger women. And if I go back to my story on Ghana, the older man that was graduating from university, he could teach his young professor some things that life has taught him. But his young professor was teaching him some things that he needed to learn through schooling. So wisdom of men comes through life experiences. And then Paul talks about the wisdom of this world. The wisdom of this world are the systems in which we function. And I was basically raised in church all my life and didn't have too much of an experience uh, uh, as to the way the street functions. I I don't have street smarts because you can get guys who who were raised basically uh, on the streets and have to survive through survival instincts because they lack certain things. And there's a wisdom that comes from that. There's a wisdom that comes from every area of discipline that we, we, we work in, whether it's in a, a sector, a financial sector, or an entertainment sector, or, or a media sector. All of these systems provide a different kind of wisdom for our lives. And then there is the wisdom of the underworld. It's the wisdom in which the demonic world functions in, and it's the wisdom in which they use to entrap human beings to keep us enslaved and keep us in ignorance and keep us in darkness. But most of all, there's the wisdom of God. And it's this wisdom, it's this wisdom that I encourage every person to seek. It's this wisdom that I encourage us to look for. I want to go to uh, Luke uh, chapter number 2 and verse 40. Luke 2 verse 40 says something that is so amazing. It says, and Jesus was filled with wisdom and the boy grew in wisdom. So, so you can be filled with wisdom, but the fact that he was filled with wisdom at that stage, it meant that at that stage of his life, the wisdom he needed for that stage of his life was given in full. But for the next stage of his life, he had to grow into that, and the wisdom needed for that, he had to grow into that wisdom as well. So this wisdom that is given is so important. In Mark chapter number 6 and verse 2, talking about the wisdom that Jesus had, Scripture says here, the people asked and says, where did this man get this wisdom? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? Because they recognized that Jesus didn't have a formal education. They recognized that as a young man, he may not have had as many life experiences. And so they recognized that this wisdom that he had obviously came from God. And Nicodemus said to Jesus in chapter number 3 of John that no man can do these works except God be with him. And so I pray that God would be with you so that your wisdom can increase. In chapter number 12 and verse 42 of the book of Luke, uh, Jesus in a discourse was telling the people, you have seen the works of Solomon, you have read of the works of Solomon, you have heard testified the works of Solomon, and all of his wisdom. And he says the queen of the south came to witness the wisdom of Solomon. And then he makes this outstanding statement, a greater than Solomon is here. Well, how could that happen? Not through schooling, definitely not through life experience. It comes through the gift of God. Jesus was gifted with wisdom that came from God. In Luke chapter number 21 and verse 15, Jesus said, I will give you words of wisdom, which means that wisdom is definitely impartable. It comes into your life. And finally, the wisdom of God comes when we are under the anointing of the Holy Spirit and God empowers us to release certain things in our lives. These things that he releases in our lives are for the assignment that he has called us to. Wisdom from God is impartable. It doesn't just come through revelation. In Deuteronomy chapter number 34, And verse 9, the scripture says, And Joshua was filled with the spirit of wisdom after Moses had laid his hands on him. And that's a remarkable thing. I can just imagine that scene on that mountainside where this huge man, Moses, with these massive hands, laid his hands on his young 
assistant pastor who was just 85 years old, laid his hands on this man and everything that was in Moses, who had written so many books, who had had personal conversations with God, who had had wonderful experiences on his own, being hidden in the rock with God, all of that wisdom was downloaded through impartation into Joshua. And then God authenticated that wisdom by demonstrating it to the people, by telling Joshua, as I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. And then he spoke through the prophet to the people and said, Obey Joshua and keep Joshua in your care because what was on Moses is now on my servant Joshua. And so I close with this prayer that not only would you be inspired maybe to go back to school and not only would you have learned from the lessons of life that life has given you, but that you would receive an impartation of knowledge and wisdom from God, firstly through his word and secondly through you praying and seeking God for it. I pray, God, that you'll give wisdom to all our listeners today, that they would increase and grow in wisdom. God bless you all. I'm Bishop Tudor Bismarck from Arari, Zimbabwe, pastor of New Life Covenant Church.